uh, I was part ad hoc uh, parking committee. Um, we are in uh, the Griffin Room this evening, uh, and today is July 16th. It's 5.30 p.m. This is a call to order, and the uh, recording and notifications, uh, taping notifications, as required by law, the town may audio or video record this meeting. Any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the chair. Uh, this will be on um, channel 18. 18, if you so wish to uh, watch what ha transpired this evening. Um, I'm going to go through the, uh, the old business, and after the old business, um, I, I'll open it up to the public. We, we do need to take something up. Um, somebody, ne somebody needs to take oh. minutes. Okay. All right. You want to take them? Well, no, no. Do you want to introduce? Yes. Do you have yeah. Yeah. Slide? Okay. All right. Uh, do I have any volunteers to take uh, the minutes of the meeting? Oh, for goodness sake, you guys! Come on. You break down some notes. <laughs> All righty. Somebody has to. I'll take the notes down. Okay. Um, okay. Before we start, would uh, each individual on the committee introduce themselves, starting on my right with Charlene. I'm Charlene Greenhouse with the town planner. Cindy Williams, executive director of the Harwich Chamber. Al Donahue. John Mahan. Francis Rich. Mike Ulrich, Cape Cod Associates Real Estate. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, the first uh, OO business is, we have listed here, is discuss and explain to attendees how we got to the point we're at right now. Now, this meeting was scheduled uh, because we had a number of requests to have it on uh, in an evening, uh, in as much as it was apparently difficult for people to come to the 10.30 uh, meeting we have on Tuesdays. So. Um, the throngs have not arrived. They're on their way. I think they're <laughs> outside. Okay. Do, do you want to just mention there's only two people here, and one of those is our selectman liaison? <laughs> yes, I will. Uh, <laughs> um, a selectman is here, as well as uh, one member of the public. Um, that is the extent of those who are at this meeting other than the committee. The, uh, the idea was to, and I don't know how deep we're going to get into this given that uh, the numbers here are minuscule at best, uh, discuss and explain uh, to attendees how we got to where we are. That was to rehash um, the original recommendation to the board, which was on Bank Street uh, for the parking in what is known as the Harbor Master's Office and or the old fire barn. Um, that is no longer, that has been shelved. We have not considered that. We then started to look towards other places for parking. Uh, the town is very limited on parking, at least in close proximity to Howard's Port. There's now, there doesn't appear to be any open land um, that is available. What we had looked at was property up at the old school, the, um, what was it, the um, cultural center? Cultural center, thank you. Uh, and about three or four other spots. Most of those did not, at least at the time we were doing this, appear to be um, something of a value to us. One of the things that we do recognize is that the town has been, the, has been very fortunate. The downtown has become a very popular uh, location for tourists, uh, people who have homes down here and who vacation on the, on the, on the Cape. Um, any, anybody who's been downtown recently and I go through downtown on a regular basis. Um, I tie in with uh, Selectman's father, Mr. McCaskill. <coughs> and uh, 
it's, it, it's, it's actually kind of a pleasure. You see more people jogging and walking downtown uh, at quarter to seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's kind of nice, it truly is. Um, the businesses, some of which are not open yet, a few are, but not too many. Uh, on Wednesday night, I understand that was a, a howling success. The number of people that were down at the uh, downtown, they, uh, I gather, enjoyed themselves. Uh, the restaurants seem to be doing well, at least based upon what I've seen. Now we get back to the parking issue. What we did determine an attempt to at least put out to the selectmen was the use of the municipal lot on School Street. Uh, it's adjacent to the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And for information and edification, the Chamber of Commerce has absolutely no involvement with the town municipal lot. They don't run it. They don't um, have any responsibility for that lot, just so that the general public recognizes that any complaints with regard to the lot have to come to the town of Harwich and not to the Chamber of Commerce. The, um, the uh, Oh yeah, we put signage in on the parking lot, uh, which is that international P, as I call it. And that is to, uh, and primarily it's there to help the public find a place to park. Um, and also what it does do too, uh, most of us who have been tourists in some capacity or other wind up uh, looking for parking spaces and we usually slow down when we're looking. We generally don't go by at 40 miles an hour. The theory being behind that, of course, is you're gonna have an opportunity to see what actually is available and the businesses benefit from that. So the parking uh, signs were placed on the Pleasant Street side of the uh, um, parking lot as well as the Route 28 side of the parking lot. It also was designated with no beach parking. Um, the idea being is that the parking lot would generate spaces, open spaces up for the public to park uh, who are um, using the uh, businesses downtown, be the restaurants or what other businesses are there. We also had the designated the parking lot, which is known as the old TD, uh, not the old TD bank, the new TD bank uh, parking area, which consists of about uh, approximately 35 parking spaces, give or take. And there has been a concerted effort to get the employees to park in that lot uh, because the, the lot appeared to be uh, not being utilized as much as uh, uh, we would like to have seen it utilized, thus opening up an additional 30 to 35 spaces in the um, municipal parking lot. We have also, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go to the RFP. We had discussed an RFP. The RFP that we had discussed has to do with finding a private entrepreneur who might be willing to use their property as a business venture, these are my words, not anybody else's, and coordinate with maybe a secondary agency to uh, provide um, service, rides to downtown, thus moving the parking areas away Many communities have been involved in this and they've done it. Uh, Nantucket, of course, has been brought up, friend brought it up with regard to Uber. Um, there are some others I know that are using golf carts. Uh, there are others that are using, and anybody who has been down to the um, Oyster Fest in Wellfleet know that they have some very enterprising young people with their rickshaws, and they cut, I think, as many as uh, three people on those. Uh, and that's a relatively, dis it's, a, it's a pretty good distance actually from the um, harbor to downtown Wellfleet. And I gather that's worked out fairly well. Uh, they're not the only ones that have done it, but they certainly seem to have uh, made a success out of it. So the, uh, the idea of the RFP is find some entrepreneurs that would like to make proposals to the town and come up with some So let me do this and take a break on this one here. Charlene, would you please? Yes, sir, I will. 
So um, Cindy and I actually met, we do a monthly meeting with uh, Chris Clark, the town administrator, uh, for Cindy to bring up any issues for the chamber or things that she needs to know regarding the town. And we mentioned the RFP and, and I did go out to my sources and nobody had anything except a very large city which would not have worked for us. So we had a conversation um, with Mr. Clark and if individuals want to do a private parking lot, they can do so, but the town can't solicit right. that. So it's not at all appropriate for us to put out an RFP to see if somebody wants to do a private parking lot. Um, in Chatham, <coughs> the town did put out an RFP for valet service, but it was from an, a town operated and owned parking lot. So the town doing an RFP just is not in the cards unless it's from a municipal lot. Um, and as you know, those are few and far between right now. All right. Well, thank so you. If, if, conversa if people know, you know, anybody on this committee knows of somebody that has a property that may want to do parking, you know, certainly as the town planner, you can hook them up with me and we can look and see if it's something that's doable. Um, but otherwise, there's really nothing the town can or should be doing um, to, to reach out to the private sector in this matter. All right. Can I ask a question? Thank you, Charlene. Is Grant. the golf cart service in Chatham, is that going to a town-owned or a privately-owned parking lot? I don't know what the golf cart service is. If it's, it's the valet you know, service yeah, you're the valet talking service. about, it's it's Chatham that's Valley. a town-owned lot. Town -owned it's lot. the Eldridge okay. parking lot that the town purchased. Yeah. At the one on 28? No, it's on, on Main, Main Street. Street. On Main Street, okay. All right. I yeah. live in Chatham. I don't go to downtown Chatham in the summer because it's insane. Mm -hmm. But um, I, d I don't didn't know what they used to They've, they've move been here before. Around. They actually came to one yeah. of the meetings, Chatham yeah. Ballet, and they've yeah. spoken yeah. with Chris, they've spoken with um, the police, myself. Um, but again, as Charlene said, it has yeah. to be a private yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Um, the drawback we've come across, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is we just do not have the private, um, we don't have the public property in the town to run a valet service. Yes, it could be done, as been suggested by some, from the high school, um, but I think the conversation has revolved around that the high school is quite a distance away from the actual downtown area. And it's also owned by Monomoy Regional, not the That's town, true. so. Yeah. Um, well, again, there's the uh, elementary, the ele old elementary school and middle school. So that property is available up on uh, Sisson Road. Um, but in any event, um, that was uh, a couple of things that we had actually discussed. Uh, but as you can see, they have um, come to some, there's some roadblocks involved in this. Uh, we discussed making- Can, can we go back a second to the town no. lots and the signage and the employee parking? Yeah. Cindy, that the employee parking seems to be working well. Employee parking is working yep. fabulous. Um, even the municipal lot, um, it started off a little rocky, but <laughs> we, we managed to get through the bumps. And now, I mean, I mean, I monitor it throughout the day. I'll go out and I don't stop anybody. <laughs> I gave up on that. But the, everyone's, they're seeing the signs. There are some that are probably straggling through, and I may miss a couple. Yep. But. The signs are working, the parking is working, the employees are parking up there. My only thing that I have noticed, the ones that were, and it's fine because they're not doing down by us, but there are ones that are further up 28 that now are using um, like the Harrisport Library. There's some other things happening down further end um, because of what we did. So um, that's just something that's happening in town that I heard about. But the lot is working. What we wanted to do is working. What time do you stop mon start monitoring in the morning? 6.30 a.m. <laughs> really? If you want to come when I get into the office, it's a little white card pulled back, backed in, backed in, in facing out. <laughs> I have been moving it around because people do know my car now. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm in at 6.30 and I'm usually gone by between 9.30 and 10 at night. Yeah. Are, are the, uh, those using like the, the small library parking lot, is it when the, park, when the library is in operation that, or when they're closed? I believe when they're closed. Okay, I mean that Which is to fine. me seems I mean, fine. Yeah. But if they're using it when the library's trying right. to function, that's not but good. What we tried, what we 
planned to do, moving that employee piece and the beach piece out of that lot has been successful. That's great. Great. Um, and I'm even selling more stickers. <laughs> so I'm making the town money. The, uh, what I'll do is I'll go to John right now with regard to parks and recreation um, of our old business. That was the discussion of attempting to monitor the parking lot, the municipal lot, to see uh, how it was being used and or abused by people who were actually parking in it and going down to the beach and leaving their car in that lot for an extensive period of time. So if you would, John. The parking enforcement officers are trying to make it part of their route, their, their route when they bounce between beaches. Um, I told Eric that's not obviously the priority. You have to make sure the beaches are operational and functional and whatnot. But he said they have been doing it. They have been, Eric has been keeping notes. Unfortunately, I don't have an update right now, but he does have, um, he does have notes and maybe if we meet again, depending on our next meeting, I will have some updates for the month of July. Yeah. I, just, he, I personally know, and I had spoken to John about this, I saw them in, at work and they're actually quite good down at Red River Beach. <laughs> they, they were Johnny on the spot, so. Well, they, they're giving out tickets. I, I mean, and it, it's kind of humorous. I actually think I've mentioned this to John. The kids at both Pleasant Street and Red River are giving out so many tickets and when people go up to them and say, what do I do with this? They've actually been telling them to come up and see me that I can fix them. <laughs> so I called the deputy chief and I said, all right, I've got a new job I get to do. He says, no, you really can't. If you have but a ticket, you pay being, it. Right, they are being really good. They yeah. are monitoring. So don't bring your lot. ticket to Cindy at the chamber? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd like to, but I can't. <laughs> I think I'm going to ask but they the, are uh, doing well. the uh, selectmen to have a new sign made for the uh, chamber. No tickets fixed here. <laughs> Um, the other thing is we are going to continue discussing alternatives to free parking. We went into this free parking uh, discussion trying to not have any punitive action taken against violators. Uh, it's my understanding and I'll stand corrected if somebody wants, wants to. We have had uh, a couple of instances where uh, people have been approached and apparently uh, were rather disrespectful, I'll use that my word, to uh, somebody who was trying to explain to them about being in that lot and it wasn't for beach parking. Uh, we had also discussed initially uh, and put it back uh, on a back burner, and that burner is becoming illuminated now, is the implementation of a fee parking. Um, I'm going to let Cindy touch upon it. Well, I'll touch upon it first of all. <laughs> We're going to look into a pilot, the, pro the, the pilot program <laughs> for the operating operation of a kiosk. Um, they've done a new one in the. Uh, it's a Sioux Harbor. Harbor. I was the there this morning. Harbor. Um, single station on a two by two pad. L I thought it was a little duff difficult to see. My wife said, "Where's the pay station?" Because there's a big sign mm -hmm. coming in. Once you know where it is, it's okay. But it's this wide, that high. And when I was there, somebody was putting his credit card in. Uh, there were a lot of orange tickets, so people are learning. Mm -hmm. Either they're ignoring one or the other. Um, but it's and I talked to the assistant harbor master, and that as Cindy has informed us in the past, that is a pilot that they're working with mm -hmm. a company just to see if you like it, right. which is a great idea instead of having to put that full blown investment mm -hmm. into spend in, and then find out it doesn't work right so because they're not inexpensive from no, what not. i've heard you know but i i have reached I've out seen. to the company after i did speak with the harbor master down there and i'm just waiting to get the quote i'll have for the next meeting um just to say for absolute just yeah. for the giggles of it yeah. all um to say um so it'll be interesting to hear dennis mm -hmm. the town of dennis response after labor day as to how it went right. mm -hmm. You know. And that's only going to be seasonally, right? That's Correct. not going to be year round. That no. that's just, required. It's just seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that came to my attention, I think it was when we were we had the public here at one of our last meetings. Uh, 
somebody was talking about the use of municipal parking lot uh, by those coming into the town for an event unrelated to the town. And um, they were taking up spaces in that parking lot down there as they were loading or unloading um, their passengers. That is somewhat of a, uh, it can be somewhat of a problem given the, the limited number of spaces that we actually do have down mm -hmm. there. Um, that, that was actually something else that Cindy and I spoke to Chris about, that there needs to be um, a, a regulation and a general bylaw adopted to govern parking. Um, so that's something, I think we got a draft of something, but quite frankly, I don't think that's something that this board should be writing or any member of this board. No. It's more a, uh, you know, here's an, we'll here's an option that we think should be looked at. And I mean, le to me, legal counsel should be drafting that, not, yeah. not us. Okay. You know, if that's um, something we want to recommend. I think well, you're talking I, like the tour buses right. or that kind of right. thing. And, right. and I think yeah. if I remember one of the um, meetings actually that we did the presentation to the selectmen, um, Mr. Clark brought up that new bylaws and enforcement regulations and all that stuff is going to go into what will happen for next year needs to be done. And I believe I'm correct. It's at the selectmen's, um, they need to do that, correct? So um, we'll make suggestions of what we've seen. Like when we come back in September, mm -hmm. say, okay, this is what we saw. Here you go. Here's the hit list. You guys write something up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So, um, Sorry. Sorry, um, Mike. Uh, I'm going to start at my left. Mike, have you got something on a um, but out there. Well, I, I agree with that as far as regulations for the for what the use of that lot would be would make sense. Um, everybody seems to be using it. Not everybody. A lot of businesses, what three hundred feet within that lot, can use it for their mm -hmm. parking for their yep. plan. So we should probably kind of keep it to that. You know, um, I'm not a fan of paid parking. I just think that uh, everywhere you turn in this state and everywhere else, they're always in your pocket for everything. Um, and I just think it's nice to be able to have a lot that you can just park and go shopping without having to pay for that privilege to do that. So I just think that's a negative thing. I think that uh, the town of Chatham, for example, has invested a lot of money in their parking and they don't charge anybody for that. Um, that's been discussed a lot. So I'm I sure it has, yeah, but it, right now it's not. Enough. And they, they see that the value of the downtown and bring a lot of people to that. I mean, as a local resident, maybe not, but tourists love it. And I think that if we go down that road, I just think it's a, not a good idea. I think that we should be welcoming people, not kind of trying to get in their pockets for every little thing. Um, I thought a nice thing for us to invest in, we probably won't do this, but a nice thing would be does the handlers um, recycling place there on uh, right across from Wolfel's place that's available. That would make a great park and great parking and you could have shuttles from that spot. It's almost right across the street from some sidewalks that you could put down there and that would be a, a great thing if we wanted to invest as opposed to trying to, uh, you know, come into some of the public stuff that's not available. There is no public stuff, but that would be a great opportunity overlooking the harbor past that. So. That would be something we can invest in. I just don't think it's a good idea to charge people for the privilege of parking and going shopping. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I agree with most of that. The handlers, that, that property, I see the town right now as I don't want to ask the town for money after the last town meeting we had. I want to see if we can figure this out without in, without investing. Um, people who come here, they, they, they arrive if they're vacationing for their week or whatever, they've picked up beach stickers, they've paid for that, they've, they've paid for their accommodations. A lot of people are here on a budget. I like the idea of not charging people to come and park. We want them to come, we want them to come back again, we want them to come back again several times during their week or that they might be here. 
If they know that it's free parking in Chatham, but paid in Harwichport, they might come once and then they might go to another town. We might lose people to another town. So I think we've got to be really careful about that. I did a lot of driving and walking around the week of the 4th of July and then last week, and I saw a big difference in the number of people that mm -hmm. were in town. Mm -hmm. It was empty this past week. I drove through the municipal a lot a few times. I walked through a couple times. There were empty spaces. I thought it was great. It's not being filled up with beach people. There might be, I think, I know I did see some beach people get out one day and head down to the beach, but, but I don't <laughs> think there's, I didn't see a parking issue um, this, past, this past week in, in town. I, it's true. It's true. I just said, Shirley and I scared them. You scared them <laughs> away. <laughs> Um, but, um, July 4th was record, record, record numbers. I mean, even the Wednesday night was crazy. It was crazy. Um, yeah. The numbers for last Wednesday are the norm. So and there were tons of people around. But you definitely noticed the difference in the... I could drive through town during and, the day and, and, just, and, and drive through. July yeah. 4th, so just to give a, a thing to look at, July 4th last year, we were open to the to town buildings aren't for the stickers. Last year we sold nineteen hundred dollars worth of stickers. This year four thousand dollars. So people are buying wow. new stickers. Yeah. Wow. I was hoping I could go the other way. They're, buy, they're buying beach stickers. Yes. Wow. Yeah. This year we doubled it. So people are paying attention. So. so and yet, on this, I'm sorry. Yeah. On the same note, s parking ticket violations are way high. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're selling more tickets. I mean, more stickers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're writing more tickets. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Shelley. <laughs> but where are the where are the two where are they selling um, doing the tickets out of Bank Street? No, Red, Red River. Yeah, Bank Street doesn't typically get a lot. So then my question comes: Are we selling so many beach stickers that we're frustrating people because they don't have a place to park at the beach? And I don't think the answer. Yeah, I don't no, think so. I don't think so. I and I, I haven't heard that at no. all. No. And I think, like I said, when we first Because everybody's started, going to Earl Road Beach now that they know it exists. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Well, John, what did you tell me? They are going to Earl Road. I went there four mm. times the last two weeks. Was yeah. it, I'm sorry. Sorry, Al. But <laughs> I'm not broken. <laughs> but we're, we're moving them around. And yeah. that was part of when we first started some of this, too. We were talking about the beach stickers and what was this was going to do. We needed to educate them. There are 21 beaches and ponds. Half the people don't even know that. Yeah. Mm. That there are 20. People will look at me and say, Really? Like, yeah, the little map in front of you, open it up. Yeah, look at them all. So we're now showing them what else is around. Yeah. So we're, spre we're spreading the wealth. Good. Yeah. John, you have anything, brother? I agree that parking isn't the optimal solution in a perfect world. Unless we can come up with a, somebody's going to drop a lot in front of us, I don't know how we're going to mm -hmm. correct. And maybe. What we're doing is going to be enough to, to put that at ease. Um, I agree with Mike, though. I mean, additional pay parking is not the perfect solution, but I know if they do it elsewhere, I do it, and I don't think about it. I mean, I go to Hyannis, I go to Plymouth, you go to Boston, I mean, San Diego, you, no matter where you are, you're paying to park. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, but I mean, if we could do without. Yeah. I mean, I've always kind of been against it. I did the tap dance because I told everybody I would. But, you know, when we did, when the chamber and the town did the new branding of Harwich, it's the warm side of the cape. It's not because the water's warm. It's because of how you feel. It's a warm, inviting piece to Harwich, throughout Harwich. So, yeah, it's not my first choice to fix it with having kiosks. Um, but there needs I, to be cooperation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from the people who are using that right. lot because exactly. if you don't get A, right. you're going to end up with B. Right, mm -hmm. and that's why some of our things that we're noticing, that we're all noticing, and I'm glad that Fran's come down to see mm. it, um, but keep the notebook so that you can say, okay, well, I saw this, this, and this, so then when we come back to the selectmen, these are our recommendations. This is what we saw. This is what the regulations now should be, and then that could help. That I mean, just the piece that we did, moving the employees into that side mm -hmm. lot, yeah. And then the beach thing. Right, that so we have the solutions that we're already implementing, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Seems to be making an effect. Right. I mean, you've already mentioned working. that, right? Yeah. That's working. Yeah. Okay. There are some spaces available. Right. 
if you just let that work itself through. That lot's not going to solve everything. It just isn't. You know, so even if we put charge people, I don't know that that's going to char you know change things that dramatically. If we regulate it as far as people not being able to use it to have other businesses that are outside that 300 feet, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's supposed to be providing support for those businesses, right? right? Yep. I mean, so people can walk there and go to those businesses. But if we're supporting or trying to support other businesses outside of that area, that's putting a lot of extra load on. So what we've done already seems to have made an improvement. Mm -hmm. And if we do some other regulations or tightening up the use of that lot, that might further support and help that lot. The rest of it is growth, right. and that might be something that, yeah, I agree with you, Fran, we shouldn't be looking to spend money, right? But um, maybe down the road, and sometimes even like, like the handle lot, for example, I think that, that would be a great um, asset to the town. And sometimes you have those opportunities once, right? You don't get that, like the one, the lot right next to your office, John, right? You get that opportunity once. You don't get that opportunity again, right? And then it's gone. But, um, but I think a lot of these things will probably take care of themselves anyways. And it's, again, it's all the educating that we're doing for everybody too. And it's, you know, the educating that we're sharing, you know, through social media, but you brought up too. And I don't think a lot of people, when they first heard what was happening with the parking, even realized that lot, when you come into town, if you're a business and you want to come into town from another town, which we have acquired mm -hmm. rapidly, which is fabulous, but if you are within 300 feet of that lot, you put that on your site plan. When you come in front of the planning board, guess what? That's on. You have to show where your parking is. So any of those businesses that have that, they're allowed that. That's their right. So anyone that questioned that in the past, they need to know everything has been correctly done with how those businesses got to have mm -hmm. spaces in that lot. Right. And the other thing, if there are um, properties, existing properties in commercial zones um, that, let's say, only operate, you know, in the evening, if they want to allow or, or have paid parking in their parking lot, in their off hours, they actually can do that. You can do a commercial parking lot as long as it's already approved. If not, then you do have to go through the site plan review to get a parking lot. Um, so, I mean, there are, you know, churches could be doing it. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, if there's a restaurant that's only open or allows shared parking. I mean, um, La Louette and We Can, they've got a great relationship where they do shared parking between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, We Can is open, um, you know, 8 to 4, 9 to 5. La Louette is open five to whatever, so La Louette can park where we can and we can can park there. So I think there are some cooperative ventures that could be done for businesses that have opposite times that they function. Uh, Mr. Chair, the other thing, no matter what happens, a great report on what's going on so far, mm -hmm. but I think the bus drop off and pick up for events off-site or out of Harwich or whatever, that needs to be addressed right. by the selectmen as part of our recommendations in the fall. Mm -hmm. That's not, and we're spinning our wheels if that's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you get 10 or 20 people come in and park. I mean, there's 20 oh. people that aren't. Yeah. E exactly. Like exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, yeah. The valet parking trying to get my head around how we could get ourselves, uh, like Cindy had said, the, the folks from uh, the valet parking were in here and did speak to uh, us <laughs> as well as the selectmen. Um, the difficulty was that there was no location at this time to park those cars. There, there was and conversation of having them here. This here, morning, right. this lot was completely full. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. Uh, Bruce Biker. Biker. It was probably Biker, yeah. but it was complete. I had a department times. head meeting, and when we yeah. came back, there were like just enough spaces yeah. for the department heads to park. But it was packed this morning. Yeah. They're like ants. They're all over the place with the bikes. I mean, it's, it's great. It truly is great. Yeah. But I know you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. I came by, and it was bike after bike rack, you yeah. know, which is a good thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, just the thought process with regard to this valet parking will... Uh, 
I think I, like if, this. I think if they're paying attention still, um, the company that came in, right. they hopefully will watch the meetings and see that there is still some movement there. Maybe they'll reach out to some of the private lots. Well, that's the ideal situation is, is to have them mm -hmm. tie in with a private lot and the town itself not getting involved mm -hmm. right. with, the, with the lot. That's what we've been trying yep. to do. Yep. Yep. Um, but um, if there are valet um, companies out there or some entrepreneur that likes to ride a rickshaw, uh, there's, there's many, many um, means of transportation that have been... Well, the rickshaw idea works very well in Wellfleet for the Oyster Fest because a lot of the roads are closed. <laughs> So you can get to and from, but I don't think um, Mass Dot's going to allow a rickshaw on Route 28. Just, it's a bicycle. Just think. I, I realize that, you but it's great still, it's yeah, yeah, phenomenal. So I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know what the process is for those, um, you know, being allowed on the roads. Well, I know in Wellfleet, when they, when everybody parks on the pier, that's where mm -hmm. I've been parking myself. The road, and I don't recall the name of the road, it comes into the center of town. They, they're pedaling right through traffic and everything else until they can make the turn to get up to the actual center of Wellfleet. So they're very adept at getting around mm -hmm. um, uh, cars. All right, but those are town roads. I'm just yes, saying, you know, yes. with state roads and town roads, there yeah. may be a distinct difference. You're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. But uh, the town may wish to look into that and see if there is some feasibility in it. Um, all right, uh, that, if I missed anything with regard to, and the whole purpose of this exercise was to fill the public in on what this committee had been doing previously with our other meetings. Um, <coughs> does anybody, <coughs> any board, have any, anything else to add to our previous discussions? Um, go ahead. I have one question for Cindy. And that's you were going to look into the CVS post office a lot. I haven't been able to find out who the owner is down there. Um, but I did, re <clears throat> I did leave a message for the Episcopal Church because one of the things that um, Mr. Colton had <clears throat> brought to us the last meeting was a little spreadsheet of the different parking lots. Yep. The only one really that could be something that possibly could work would be the church. Sunday school, you can't ask them <clears throat> to me to give up their parking for beach parking. I mean, they, right. you know. Um, Allen Harbor Yacht Club, again, that's their private lot um, for the Yacht Club during the season. Uh, I think those were the only, and then the golf course. Um, they're packed. I mean, even tonight mm -hmm. when I was just coming up um, and later at night. So um, I think we're gonna have to use the ideas of the two bank parking lots for right now. Um, I don't know and I, dread the whole idea of trying to get a sign permit for an A-frame sign to say public parking full or whatever. Um, but I will Actually, reach if it's a municipal sign, it doesn't need a permit. You just need to let the building commissioner know. So, so if question. it's for Bank Street or Earl All Road right. at 28, it just needs to be, um, there we go. <laughs> you just need to let the building commissioner know go it ahead. needs to meet the size. And it needs to not be, you know, obstructing views and stuff. But nope. so what we yeah, wanted to if do, if it's a municipal sign, when then, you weren't yeah. here last meeting, it had come up about an A-frame sign, say at the beginning of Bank Street by Heather's, mm -hmm. to just say lot closed, yep. kind of like at other beaches when they say yep. that. Yep. So if we can have that there, and then a sign down by <clears throat> my garden area mm -hmm. um, that just says more public parking up at the two banks, mm -hmm. you know, after five, like on the Wednesday nights and such. So if we can do those two signs, that will actually encourage some more things of, so that those yeah. bills be considered, all right. Yeah, as those. long as you let the building commissioner know. I will. Um, that the signs are going up, they do need to be, you know, meet the other standards. Yep. Um, you know, they can't be eight by 15, you know, they no, <laughs> six square feet and, and not obstructing and, um, Okay. You know, they should not be in the road right of way, but that's no. kind of hard in some places. If it's going to be on private property, then you do need to ask, get permission from it's the property on, owner. One's going to be on mine, so I'm saying okay. Um, and the that's other one. It's not really yours, it's Tammy's. Well, no, because I, 
I take the pet name, whatever. Okay, but yeah. One's going to be yep. in <coughs> our garden area, yep. right by where we have the beach, selling beach sticker yep. sign right there. And then the other would be down by Heather's to just let people know that Bank Street was full. No, I understand yeah. that. It just, it needs to be placed right. appropriately. Believe me, I've yeah. been through this routine, you know. Yes, I do. <laughs> Painfully. Um, what? Anything oh, else, yes. Fran? And I guess Sorry, my, yeah, my other question is, we, we <coughs> did discuss last meeting signs to direct people to Earl Road Beach. Mm -hmm. Is that necessary? I don't like signs if we don't need them. Is it nec is that necessary? You, you're telling enough people. Heck yeah. yeah. I mean, it appears to be working. It's yeah, working. I yep. mean, don't need a sign. just during, I can't remember what, how many you told me that, um, but the Park and Rec said that their Earl Road stickers were up, their day stickers were up from last year. So they're definitely getting the people down there. So, yeah. yes. Good. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead. I don't recall discussing a full sign at Bank in 28. That's what we had, I had in my notes um, from the last um, meeting that we wanted to ask about that, to have it so then at the top, so that when people were coming down, if they were gonna go to Bank Street Beach, they'd know before they got down there, scurrying around the parking lot that it was closed. What, what, do, you, what do you think? I mean, I could have- Oh, no, 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 I, was just, I didn't remember having that discussion at all, to be honest with yeah. you. And back to Fran's point, I'm not a fan of signs. I think we have- too many signs. Oh yeah, believe oh, yeah. I'm oh. against them. Coming yeah. off of Route Six is just nauseating at that yeah. when you come right across yeah. with his 15 signs. Yeah. I don't know. Are we getting complaints? What was the thought process behind? That was just brought up. That was one of the comments that were brought up at the last meeting. Another option, rather than an A-frame, it might yep. be smaller. And people is um, something from the street sign. You know, something that. Existing signs. Yep. The existing street sign just having Maybe something some that of a folds fix. down, yeah. you or know, a couple hooks or something, yeah. beach parking full. Okay. Something. We're not going to get a sign like they have on Route 6 for Nasset. No. 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 <laughs> um, does anybody, uh, I'll probably th ask this question of our selectman, Mr. McCaskill. Um, <laughs> Lewis Street, was there any? Can we talk to Mr. Oh. Roberts? Sure. He lives on Lewis. Okay, that's right, it does. Can I approach the table? Please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Ow. <laughs> Having trouble with my legs tonight. Oh, dear. Uh, my wife and I are uh, full-time residents on Lewis Lane. Um, and I did come tonight um, with a couple of questions, but if you have questions for Just me. Just so people know, Lewis is the one directly behind the banks, right? That's correct. Yeah. It okay. connects that Pleasant goes to Street Pleasant. with the two bank parking yep. lots. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I have um, some questions for you, but you may answer them. And anyway. full disclosure, John was our real estate agent when we bought our house, and uh, he just was the agent for my sister-in-law as well here in town. So just so that's uh, above board. Um, my initial question is about minutes. The last minutes that are posted on your uh, web page with the town website or your uh, committee page, April 1st. I, I'm the one responsible for doing the minutes. I didn't know if the last set of minutes had been approved because I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay. So after tonight's meeting, if these are approved, the three sets will go on there. Okay, great. Yep. And the reason I'm asking that is I wrote a letter uh, on the 31st of May to the committee, and I just wanted to ensure that that was made part of the record. Was it read openly? Was it published with the minutes? Generally, they I don't get published with the minutes, but if I there's know. reference to them. I don't recall How, reading it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe you read it. No. Oh, but it was, you shared it, it with the yeah. committee. Yeah, we, we did go over the you uh, mentioned letter, but yeah. I don't think yeah. it was read publicly. May I ask if everyone read it? I remember some of, I remember yeah. some of the pieces of it, but yes. I did read it, because I got one. Sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know John. Ma'am? I have not read it. May I read the letter tonight? Fran, Fran, wasn't, uh, on the, knew, Fran wasn't on the committee. Yeah, that's why Fran did. I understand. May I read the letter tonight? Sure. Thank Certainly. you. Thank you. It reads as follows. 7 Lewis Lane, Harwichport, Massachusetts, 02646, May 31st, 2019. To the Ad Hoc Harwichport Parking Committee, dear Chairman Donahue and members of the committee, my wife and I, full-time residents of Harwichport live on Lewis Lane, the private way, private way, that connects Pleasant Street with the rear of Cape Cod Fives and TD Banks parking lots. 
A little history. In the mid-1950s, a right-of-way was granted by the resident owners of Lewis Lane to Cape Cod 5 and Cape Cod 5 only for their staff and customers to access the bank's parking lot during banking hours. No other persons or entities were included in the right-of-way. Now, 60-some years later, Lewis Lane, our private way, has become a favorite cut-through for motorists and is likely unidentifiable as a private way by most people in town. We had the Harwich Police Department conduct a speed and volume study for us over four weekdays in August 2015. 714 vehicles used our private way in that four-day period, some going over 40 miles an hour. We then contacted Cape Cod 5, who had no current memory of the terms of their right-of-way. We voiced our very deep concerns about pedestrian safety issues and wear and tear of the lane, and Cape Cod 5 patched some large potholes and installed the seasonal speed bumps that you see in place now. My wife and I are not anti-business. We celebrate the vibrancy of Harwich Port in which the business is every success. We shop and dine locally and are happy we chose Harwich Port for our home. However, there must be limitations to the public use of Lewis Lane. For example, in stroll nights, when the entrance and exit lanes from Main Street to the bank's parking lots are blocked, our private way becomes the only vehicle access for the parking lots. The first stroll night we experienced was a nightmare. Cars parked on both sides of our lane, as well as in our driveways, and in some instances, on our lawns. It was impossible for cars to pass each other, and the narrow passage would have created a serious problem had an emergency vehicle needed access to the parking lots. As you may know, the bank's parking lots are a staging area for emergency vehicles if there is an incident or situation in town. We contacted the Harwich Police Department, and through discussions with Sergeant Gushgarian of the Traffic Division, the department has since posted no parking signs on our lane for the strolls. However, that does nothing to alleviate the volume of incoming and outgoing traffic on the lane on those evenings. There are still serious pedestrian safety issues as vehicles race up and down the lane in search of parking spots. There's a gate in the fence between TD Bank's parking lot and what was the municipal overflow lot, now renamed as the employee parking lot. <coughs> to the best of my knowledge, this gate has never been opened, at least on stroll nights. Why not? The tra opening it would ease traffic flow and hopefully take some of the traffic away from our private way. And I am sure opening it would help traffic flow at other times as well. We resident owners of Lewis Lane receive no town services. No surface maintenance, no snow plowing or sanding. We even pay for our own street light. It's up to us to maintain the lane at our expense. Lewis Lane has in many ways become a public access route for Harwich Port to the detriment of the residents. Now we see that the bank's parking lots will be advertised as open for parking after banking hours for the many people who wish to shop and dine in our town. As you fulfill your charge to create solutions to the parking problems in Harwich Port, Please be advised that Lewis Lane, a private way, must not and will not become any part of your solutions. Very truly yours, Alfred H. Roberts, Jr. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, was my letter. Um, I would like to uh, get an answer to the gate issue between the employee lot and the remainder of the TD Bank parking lot, why that gate has never been opened. I believe that's something with the bank, and I can double check with Amy. Okay. Well, we, yeah, we need to look at what the license agreement yep. says. I, I just wrote a note they, for that. They put a perfectly serv serviceable gate in that fence. Yep. And yet I know there's a reason. I just can't remember what it was, but I will double check with her. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Um, um, I'm just wondering, um, and maybe this is a conversation we need to have with, um, um, is it Sergeant Gushgarian or? Mm -hmm. Is he sergeant or officer? Sergeant. 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 Yeah. Um, you know, whether it might not be advisable to put up sawhorses to detract from there. Okay. They can move them for emergency vehicles, but I'm thinking particularly on Wednesday night. Well, on nights. the Wednesday nights, the reason why it's blocked off on the on 28th side is <clears throat> because the bands play there. So, mm -hmm. and it's dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, so, because I've, I've actually spoken to Deputy Chief uh, Constantine about it at great length mm -hmm. about it and trying to figure out, well, can we do open it? And it's like, no, no, you really can't. But why can't we put, I mean, I've got these 
ugly orange barrels, but why can't we put them down by the beginning of Lewis Lane so people know? I mean, I actually, when we block off um, where the Mad Minnow parking lot is in mm -hmm. Pembroke Jewelers for the bands for that, sure. I put orange barrels there so people can't park in after 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I have no problem doing the same thing if, that, if you guys want to do that so then they're not whizzing through. Yeah. I understand as that. long as the emergency vehicles can get mm. through they're I light enough that, I mean I, yeah. I carry yeah, yeah, them up yeah. and down 28 all the time <laughs> I want a picture <laughs> of that so I mean that that could be some help for the Wednesday nights mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that that would though where, where would your access to the bank parking lots though if we're My well we have to look exactly. at the gate now are both accesses to yeah. the bank yes. closed yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Then and we'd have to look at why. And, uh, and the it, gate. Always, it always has been like yeah. that. But I mean, doesn't mean. I mean. I don't know if you, if you recall, Cindy, but a few years ago, when I was president yep. of the chamber, there was somebody I don't recall who it was. He was newer on Lewis Lane, and he was. Was it you? Yes, was it was. Extremely. I upset. attempted to contact you several times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I did stop by your house a few times. Yeah. Um, don't recall. Yeah. Well, anyways, but there's. It was. I actually talked to Chris Clark about getting a planter because it was so, if it was, maybe it wasn't you, I can't remember, but because you were saying to open the gate, and this mm -hmm. person was against opening the gate. Mm -hmm. And one time. The TD Bank one. TD Bank, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. The yep. gate was opened by <laughs> a stake or something. No, the TD it, Bank one has never been. You're actually it, thinking of the Cape Cod 5 yeah. one because years ago the, there the was. The, the new lot, the one mm -hmm. that's now using for employee yep. parking, there's a gate there. Right. Uh, that yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah. That's, to my knowledge, because I don't have a key, and I think Amy's the only one that does have a key. That's correct, she does. Yeah, because yep. I investigated all that to okay. find out how right. the gate was open, who yeah. opened it, because there was a, there who was is, a problem. Who, Somebody um, was upset. Amy's the manager. The manager. Uh, okay, at TD. Yeah, okay. was upset on yeah. Lewis Lane, and I don't think it was you because they were upset about opening it. No. And so they said that she Yeah, somebody, be open. they contacted the town because right. they wanted planters put in. Right, they were upset. But there that was the gate nothing was about. Because I was taking yeah. traffic. Ali Sabatino the back was the of that parking then. lot and the municipal lot yeah. and then out Lewis Lane. So they were saying if you if you open that lot up, you open up that gate, people are just going to come right out that parking lot and right out to Lewis Lane to get on Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. So they wanted it closed so that that wouldn't happen. They said it was supposed to be closed. I, mean, I didn't know the details behind why it whether it yeah. should or shouldn't, but anyways, yeah. that was. Well, we can certainly look at the license agreement, but if it even if it's just on Wednesdays that we can open that gate because TD Bank isn't operating. Right. They're closed. Both the banks are closed. But so Mike just hit the, no matter what solutions we're coming up with here, mm -hmm. there's a yin and a yang. Right. Oh, yeah. We talked about, okay, put the block, block off Lewis Lane and Pleasant. Mm -hmm. Well, now you just lose how many spots mm -hmm. because the front entrances to the banks are closed. Mm -hmm. So you close off the Lewis Lane I from mean, Pleasant. I mean, technically, so, I do believe they could be blocking it themselves. So we have, what's, but we have two yeah. municipal, two lots there that we just received permission to use that we're gonna that, that not get on access Wednesdays. on Wednesday nights. If, like Mike said, if you open yep. up that gate, yep. I think you're in a worse position than you are now because everybody that's in that chamber lot, how many spots? In the, the, um, the um, not the chamber, the municipal lot. <laughs> municipal. Twenty-five years of chamber lot. Yeah. Sorry. It's like eighty in there, and I'm afraid you're going to funnel, like Mike said, you're going to funnel time. three quarters of those. The other thing too is Lewis. Right. Yeah, and opening up that, you have to remember that's now employee parking. If they're whizzing through, somebody. Exactly. I, you're just going to be careful. Plus, I also are. believe. Hold one second. I also believe with that extra lot that's now closed. I believe there's also an agreement with the Anchorage to not open that. I'm not sure, but I, that's why I want to look at everything before mm -hmm. we open up the can mm -hmm. of worms, just because there is something in that. But I guess my point is, they as private citizens with a private road after Cape Cod 5 is closed, they can block that themselves if they wanted to, we as have long as emergency vehicles can get through. But that's just my opinion, but I don't think there's anything precluding them from that if. I'm not too sure what you can actually block there, but I mean, you know, with the private road, emergency vehicles get through it. Is that I, I said they can block it provided emergency vehicles can get through. If they put up a sawhorse, you can pick up a sawhorse and move it. Was so that the purpose of the gate behind Cape Cod 5 way back when? Did they close that at the end of, and Michael's probably, I don't know, someone's been around here longer than I have. 
But they used I, to have that steel gate. They used to, but that was something that the real estate piece of Cape Cod 5 had taken down at one point, and there's something, there's history to that. If I may, that was taken down in 2015. Okay. Um, my wife and I moved in 2000, late 2014, um, and that gate became a, a contentious issue, mm. um, and uh, along with one of our neighbors uh, who will remain unnamed for this evening. Um, but the gate was taken out by the bank uh, because um, of the restriction to their staff and customers that, that closing that gate, and at one point it actually did get locked. And that was not anyone else's intent, but it happened. Um, but that was finally resolved with the bank. As I said in my letter, we had discussions, and, and going forward the bank understood uh, their responsibilities with the, with the right of way, and now we're all we're quite happy with, yeah. with the arrangements. Um, they put the speed bumps in, they take them out for us, uh, they did do paving, um, but um, the, um, I believe your uh, reference to the planters, uh, back in 2015 when that uh, fence between, uh, or when uh, TD Bank fenced off its section to give it over to the town for town use, that was supposed to have been a, a um, aesthetically pleasing barrier, and those were supposed to have been planters, Dave Spitzer at the time, Dave Spitz, I'm sorry, Spitz. Um, at the time um, had, and his wife as part of the garden club, had uh, suggested that that be planters or something to make it more attractive. Obviously it became something uh, other than planters, but um, again, that was my question now that you've answered about the gate, that um, we're, we're not, interested in inconveniencing the town by making our lane some kind of problem for, for the town. It is the use, and what we see is overuse. Now, we on the, on the lane have had discussions about closing it. Um, we do have a, a real estate attorney as one of the residents, and so we've had that, that discussion along legal lines. Um, we, it would be a last resort. Mm -hmm if some other means of reducing the volume of the traffic. Again, because of the wear and tear, again, because of the safety issues. It's fine with the no parking signs, although uh, cars still do fly over those speed bumps trying to get up into the bank parking lots. Um, mm -hmm. And as you know, the fields behind the paved parking lots fill up very rapidly too. Um, uh, you, you folks have a an incredible job to do here. I mean, I do not envy you at all what you have to what you have to do. It is a tremendous problem in town to balance the 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 um, needs and the um, um, just comfort of the residents with this tremendous growth in town uh, for its popularity as a as a. a, a a visitor location. I mean, you see everybody from everywhere here. I can't tell you how many people. I work in Chatham, and I hear people talking about Harwichport. Well, that's great. That's great. It's on down the road. If you can't get into the Squire, I can get you into two or three places in Harwichport. It's wonderful. But I do not envy you. Um, if I may, in, in closing, um, you mentioned a pay kiosk. Um, Sisuit Harbor installed one. Um, if, if, uh, yeah, that's the pilot program mm -hmm. that, um, that we've yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know if everybody knew yep. about that. Um, we're over there often, and um, it seems to be working. Now, I'm not in favor of paying for parking either. I don't, I don't think that we need to pay for mm -hmm. anything else. Um, but again, it is something, if you're researching the concept, that um, it apparently is working for them. We were there just um, over uh, Fourth of July weekend, mm -hmm. and... Uh, it, it's working. The, the craziness of that parking lot has diminished significantly. And that was crazy. Yeah. So I have, yeah. I have a question um, regarding when it's so crazy. Is it mainly just the Wednesday nights that you're all? Uh, Wednesday nights are the, <coughs> the, the major, mm -hmm. uh, although we are, as you know, a, a convenient cut through. Yeah, no, Everybody I'm just, uses it. because the chamber and myself are the ones that put the Wednesday nights on. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to visually think while I'm sitting here um, how we can move bands around because we have a band at Cape Cod 5. It's a central right. location. Mm -hmm. Works great. 
I'm just trying to think how we can maybe relocate the bands. So I mean, so that it's not every Wednesday that mm -hmm. it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. um, so let me spend some time on that. I, I certainly understand you're having to block that off. That's yeah. a bad turn coming off 28 it, inches. Yeah, and yeah. totally that's what the police told me. It's and for safety reasons. Absolutely, and I'm 100% yeah. in agreement with no. that. Uh, doesn't do much for us on Lewis Lane. I know, but, that's... Um, I, can, I can see that I would not want to be responsible for leaving those, those, that exit and entrance open with the pedestrians, with the kids, with the dogs, with mm -hmm. just... It's too hard to get out onto 28. You never get onto 28. I know. That, <laughs> On a, on a Wednesday night. Yeah. You're lucky getting off Bank Street or I had a question for you with regard to uh, the evening of Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening. Now the police had put the signage up, no parking, and of course, like you mm -hmm. say, the speed bumps were there. Did you have any, and I know that was one of your concerns, people parking on the properties of the homeowners. Mm -hmm. Did that happen? Uh, it hasn't happened yet this year. So the um, signage is working. I've, yeah. been, I've been putting out um, uh, saw horses in my neighbor's driveways uh, just so that uh, there, we have, we're the only full-time permanent residents uh, right. on the on the lane. Um, so I've been trying to kind of help out, uh, just to make the the lane look a little more occupied um, on Wednesday nights, so that that driveway parking and the and the front lawn parking doesn't. Have you ever thought about take place? Um, putting new signage up up uh, on the on the street. You, you, you have a no. Trespassing sign, which is buried behind. That's it. Can ba you can barely see this, and I was just curious if it might be worth the neighbors' efforts to put a new sign up that says, you know, it's a private way. Uh, some people, believe it or not, people do um, won't go up a private way if, mm -hmm. in fact, they know it is. And I'm not suggesting for a moment it's going to change anything mm -hmm. radically. You know that, but if a newer sign was put up. And uh, one was put up on either end of the street. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure as to. Uh, I would, I would look private road, residents private only. Road, residents only. We, I had uh, addressed that with uh, the other uh, residents on the on the lane, and um, it was a contentious issue. Really? Uh, people did not want signage on their on their little lane. Yeah. Um, the one you referred to, sir, uh, was put up uh, in, I believe, the 1950s. By, <laughs> by the original owner of the house uh, just to the north of us. Um, and it's, um, I had suggested taking it down and they were aghast that that historic sign <laughs> was going to be taken down. Um, and we had some um, reluctance of, of other people that we don't want signs. Um, we got away with, there's a, there is a, the bank put in a 10 mile an hour speed limit sign as you come out of the bank parking lots at the head of the lane. Um, and that's as far as we got with signage. Um, and that, of course, nobody looks at that. They're still going 40 miles an hour if they can down over the speed bumps. But, it's such um, a short little road. It's like, where are they going? <laughs> I don't know how you can get up to 40. I, I know. Oh, my bumps. God. I don't <laughs> dispute that you say. I, I believe in it, but it's run in there. where the heck are they going? They're, well, I'm, I'm, John, I know, has seen, has seen the lane the times he stopped by. Mm -hmm. You know it's, mm. it, can get, it can get busy and fast. They, it's a straightaway. You know, if we had turned it into a <laughs> serpentine, that would be fine. But uh, that's... Uh, well, it also says there's two issues. One is Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't think people would be going fast through there anyways because it's blocked on 28 coming out of the parking lot, right? Mm -hmm. So people are probably going slow trying to find a spot maybe to park at the banks. And Wednesdays, is just that's kind of a, an anomaly. That's yeah, just kind of a, mm -hmm. it is what it is. It's just a great event, and it just attracts a lot of people to the town of Howitch, and it's just one of those things, you mm -hmm. know? The other part would be speeding, perhaps. Um, hopefully, those you get like three, I think. There's three speed bumps. Speed bumps. Hopefully, mm -hmm. that mitigates a lot of it, and hopefully, the signage also mitigates a lot of the parking, especially on people's lawns, which is which is not right. And I did talk to Aram way back when, and he was uh, saying, you know, just call the police and yeah. have them towed and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the speeding thing would be a separate issue outside the. Wednesday night season, like with mm -hmm. Bank Street, and they started to put those signs up, which I think are great, the, you know, flashing, you're going, your speed is this, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, because mm -hmm. um, they're 
residents on Bank Street have a problem with that as yeah, well. Yeah. So I, I just see those as two kind of separate pieces. I mean, mm -hmm. Wednesday's Wednesday. That's just a it's just a challenge no matter what. There's no s mm -hmm. really solution to that. I don't see. I saw you shaking your head out. Are you saying the speed bumps have not slowed the people down? They when Mike mentioned they slow a few people down. Um, I and I approached the bank about it, but I would like to get doubles. So it's ba boom ba boom instead of just a <laughs> ba boom, and and that might do it. Um, I, I invite you all to come and and uh, uh, sit on our front lawn. I'll put some chairs out for you, and you can watch the cars uh, go up and down. And some people just do not Which slow number down. Are you? Number seven, the shark mailbox. And then you get a bullhorn. Hey. <laughs> Hold on. I've gotten. Uh, I have yelled, and I have gotten a. Uh, a certain gesture in response. Uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You're number one, right? Number one. They must be telling me that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I not, would think that. Oh. No. Go ahead, Francis. I would think that that the bank putting up a speed limit sign of 10 miles an hour gives the wrong impression. Oh, I actually can drive down here. I can just have to drive slowly. Well, bank but employees and, and customers <coughs> are allowed to use that. But how do we know? who's a bank customer exactly. and who's yeah. not. Yeah. And if I were to stop every car with a toll gate and say, are you a customer of Cape Cod 5, the answer would be a yes. resounding yes. Yeah. So we're, again, I'm, and I've mm -hmm. taken up probably too much of your time. Um, it, it's not a, parking in Harwardsport is not a Lewis Lane issue. And I, I don't want, mm -hmm. I don't want to, to come off as the, as the curmudgeon, you know, with the garden hose, get off my lawn, you kids. Um, we're, we're just concerned that, that your solutions need to, to uh, take into account our proximity and what Lewis Lane is, which yeah. is a direct connector and now, a you know, popular connector mm -hmm. between Do you Pleasant. notice it a lot other than just Wednesday? Uh, I'll tell you when the big traffic is. Yep. Uh, is Friday afternoon with the contractors going to cash their checks and deposit their checks mm. at Except the banks. Except their customers. <laughs> And, but they're cut. But uh, but they TD, might be TD. They might TD, be uh, TD customers as yep. well. And uh, we have had discussions about writing TD and saying the only easement, the only right of way that was granted for staff and customers of a bank is for Cape Cod Five. But w I don't want to become, and my neighbors mm -hmm. don't want to become again the curmudgeons of Harwich Port. And oh, there goes Mr. Roberts, you know that kind of thing, uh, and get eggs thrown at the house and and. <coughs> That that is not our that is not our intention. My wife and I are very happy in Harwich Port. It's a great little town. What what variety? What what spiciness and and the great uh, uh, contretemps with the with the establishments and the music and you know it, this this is great. This is small town America. This this is where you want to be. It's been and recognized for, all of uh, the for two major holidays this summer already for that. Harwich Port has been by Country Living. Really? Best small town in the United States. There no we go. other no other Cape Cod town or Massachusetts town for both Memorial Day and July fourth. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. Just wanna just let you know. How happy, <laughs> how happy should we be? Uh, yeah. So um, Yeah, how many times did you go on and vote? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't even know. I had to well, I, I had been oh, spoken thank to. Thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm not suggesting that we're gonna come up with a solution for this, but we are aware of it. And when you started reading the letter, yes, I have read that letter <laughs> several times, and I was aware of it. Thank you, sir. Uh, as the rest of the board was as well. But we appreciate you coming in and sharing your concerns, and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be on our, on our minds anyways as we deal with this. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. If I may. Um, yes. Here's my card as well. Thank you. Right. And mine's out on the counter out there if you want to grab mine. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. McCaskill of the selectmen if he would uh, come up if he has any thoughts with regard to what has transpired. Um, first thought is their sp speed bumps are awesome. Definitely slows me down. <laughs> 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 One of the few. Uh, and thank Mr. Roberts and the other members of um, the neighborhood, Lewis Lane, for their patience while we navigate this very difficult decision. Um, Cindy, I think you hit the nail on the head with m maybe moving a band and opening that up from 28. I know it's not the ultimate answer, but I share exactly what Mr. Lewis said. I've watched cars leave that back parking lot at night when that strolls over and they just.
parade through that neighborhood. So if there was a blockade not allowing people through that neighborhood and the TD Bank uh, gate was open and that, that bank parking lot probably fills up at the beginning of the night. It does. A little yeah. A-frame out front that says parking lot full so no one tries to pull in yeah. once the bands are playing and then everyone exits through the TD. That seems to me like a reasonable solution to that. Um, and really nothing else. Just thank you guys for your continued work and I think that you're right. The first suggestions you made and that we approved have worked. Um, I, I think that um, I share uh, Fran's comments on driving through the parking lot through the port. Certainly 4th of July uh, on Cape Cod, I think we sunk a little bit. There was a lot of people here. Mm. But other than that weekend, uh, I, I frequent almost every restaurant in Harwich Port and the businesses in Harwich Port and live very close. I didn't see a problem. I didn't see a problem on the side streets. I didn't see a problem in the parking lots. Um, after the fourth weekend, I did go to Red River Beach, pulled right in, pulled right into a parking spot. So I don't, I don't think it's um, a huge issue other than certain times. So really just thank you. Continue the great work. Glad you're doing it, why not? Mr. Hi. Lewis, um, just to segue after what Mr. McCaskill mentioned. So the bands are booked for this year, but I do have flexibility because <laughs> I do place them. Tomorrow night there is one there. Um, I will look at the map and see if I can move some um, as a compromise for this summer. I need to look at it really because there are, it's, that also becomes a challenge um, too, to place them and everything. But let me take a look at it. Um, maybe if you want some time, just come down to my office and I can let you know where I've been able to move some things. We appreciate that. Absolutely. No, thank definitely. No. Well, thank you one and all for helping. Um, the committee has still got a ways to go. Uh, our direction right now is going to be somewhat questionable exactly where we're going to go, but I think we'd like to, as I understand our body here, that it might be helpful to go towards uh, the um, valet type of parking. Uh, that's going to be a private thing. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, and uh, we'll see where we can go with that. And uh, Cindy's going to work on. <laughs> I always come out of this with something else to she, do. I don't, I don't know how she actually does it, but uh, you know, if she's if she's able to work magic and get the uh, the music moved to another location, um, that would be extremely helpful. But. Mm -hmm. That's quite a challenge in and of itself. Yes, Mr. McCaskill. Just a quick comment on the, uh, the valet and the half having to be private. I'm going to ask the chair to put this back on our agenda so that we can talk about municipal lots that we own um, and whether or not those can be used. This is a town problem, and this is something that the selectmen want to, um, to make work. We love the amount of business we have in Harwichport right now and how busy Harwich is, so we, we need to really be serious about what we own and how we can help and not just p try and get it into the private sector because yeah. of law. We, we have looked at a number of the town lots, you know, the parking lot here, the parking lot at the cultural center, um, uh, you know, the com we even looked right. at the community center and nothing popped out at us because, you know, we thought, oh, community center will be great. Well, quite frankly, during the their operating hours, that parking lot is full. Right. The only no one that really overflow. jumps out at me is the cultural center yeah. uh, adjacent to the elementary school and we still control the elementary school property. That's mm -hmm. not the, ele exactly. the elementary the, yeah. school side. Right. Yes. The cultural yeah. center side. I mean as we all know that's yeah. doing very very well and that's why we didn't want to right. investigate more the cultural center piece but the elementary school I think was mm -hmm. one of the ones that were on our list. Right. Right. So. And Sacquatucket Harbor that's no way. No way. <laughs> that's full. Yeah, the, uh, the school, though, we had talked about that because mm -hmm. it's close proximity, Sisson Road, straight down, and South Street mm -hmm. to downtown. Yeah. It would also open up some of the businesses that are located. There's a couple of businesses mm -hmm. at the port, port of call. Yep. And, uh, but we also need, how do we get them from point A to point right. B? Because we don't have right. money right now for a shuttle or a trolley or even a valet serve, unless we go out to bid for a valet. But it's kind of late in the season for that. Yeah, these are next year things. Yeah. Just one last comment. Uh, Handlers is sold. 
it's uh, it's not closed the yet. Opportunity. It's Go not. We, yeah, we lost the opportunity. Lost it, the opportunity. It is moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. And the other, Thank and I'm, I'm beating Thank I'm goodness. Beating <laughs> The, I, I personally don't think we had this discussion last meeting that I, I think once you get off of 28 or the proximity <coughs> close to it, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the people you need to shine. I don't think people will use the cultural center. I don't think they'll use, we had talked town hall at one point. Mm -hmm. I just don't think people will think that way no matter how much we educate them. Perfect world, I mean, yep. again, it's perfect world. Mm -hmm. It'll be something between Neal Road and CVS, a little yep. bit north and then north and south. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. They so far have not come up with a property owner. I'm asking everybody. Sorry, Cindy, I'll look to you. <laughs> <laughs> the CVS pharmacy mm -hmm. parking lot, mm -hmm. are those records available through the town and who owns the property? I've been trying it's to a reach, corporation. Yeah, and I've been trying to um, find out from um, one of the gentlemen over at Ace Baskins. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we we ha that's all public information, but if it's you know, John Q. Public Incorporated at, in Quincy or whatever, you know, you, I'll try again. a the, person the, is. Yeah. In my previous life, that's um, the, the Secretary of State's yeah. office used to be pretty helpful on trying to locate who property owners were. Uh, particularly corporate, mm -hmm. and there's usually a name affixed to that mm -hmm. corporation. I mean, there may be as you delve into the deeds, but yeah. you know, I think I'll, the easiest way is asking a tenant. I'll down at Ace, and I'll just see if I can yeah. get it. Okay. Or there's probably a property manager too yeah. for that property. Yeah. 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 Um, to John's point too, it, and I have to agree with him. People are not going to drive. To park a uh, half mile away and then uh, have to wait to be shuttled back to their cars and they're knocking around with three children who are under the age of 10. <laughs> Shoot me. Um, <laughs> 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 but anyway, my grandchildren will love me for that. Um, and they'll see this tomorrow okay. on YouTube. <laughs> I know. <they> <laughs> <laughs> Gramps. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, new business. Uh, review and approve the meeting, uh, the minutes of the meeting for June 25, and are the ones available for April 1? Is that the one we were talking about previously? I don't know. Why did I have those two? No, you did not. Okay. <laughs> no, I, think I thought we approved. They've the been approved. No, we did. They've okay. been approved. No, we had. All right. Yeah, so. the, that's the last set of minutes on the website. Okay. What's not on there is the May 7th and June 4th because I didn't know if they had been approved. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the meeting, the minutes of the 25th of June? The only question I have on that, Mr. Chair, is did we adjourn at 12.30 or 11.30? I thought it was 12.30. I thought we were here for quite some time we because we had the big production. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think you. it was a little earlier than that, but. Yeah. Second. Was... All in favor? What are you All right. Who's, who's going to second it? You second it. Abstain. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. So who, who um, said that? He, he approved John. Who, who was, John was the second. first. Yeah. Who second? All right. Who seconded it? Oh, I did. Sorry. Okay. You, you, oh, yeah, sure. No. Who did this? I, I thought, thought I second. I thought you approved. He seconded. Okay. Yeah. Somebody Start made over. Motion. Somebody I, needs to make a motion to approve. I made the motion. Okay. okay. To approve. Usually the chair doesn't make motions, but yeah. that's okay. I was, I was like just trying to move it along. Okay. <laughs> second it. Okay. The uh, all right. And John apparently yeah, seconded. <laughs> all right. The next meeting date. Um, it's going to be a Tuesday. Um, at ten thirty. At ten thirty. Um, this is uh, July sixteenth. 17th or was I 17th? 16th. 16th. Um, I don't see us needing to have another meeting, and I, I'd like to have some opinions here. I agree. Um, but maybe, maybe you're later in August, so then we can prepare, like, even if we did, like, the 20th or even the 27th, so we can prepare for when we have to then go back in front of the selectmen in September. You need to have the summer info. 
I right. believe. Yeah. So You're not going to have that. Not you okay. think you need to meet we first have. part of September. All right. For the so we'll rent. have all the input, Cindy, from you, from the parking okay. enforcement mm -hmm. officers. We can have a better picture of the entire summer, not yeah. just. Yeah. Do we okay. uh, either the day after Labor Day or the next week? So I think that's what the uh, third probably September. The day, uh, probably third. after Labor Day, because Labor Day is going to be a portion of the uh, information. You'll have it the I think 10th. it's the tenth. Is it the tenth? The tenth. Yep. Okay. All right. So the next meeting is going to be uh, on September tenth, ten thirty a.m. Uh, we will probably be in the uh, the other Small room, room, the smaller room. I'll reserve it. Thank you, Sean. All right, do I have any other further discussion? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All right, that motion to adjourn was not made by me. It was, uh, it was Cindy and, and I seconded it. Thank you. You have to vote it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted.